Department Presentation Engineering, Road Capital Plan Update. Jake, come on up. Evening, Select Board. Good evening. Good evening. How are you doing, Jake? Good. All right. Um, I'm here tonight to present or give you an update on the capital improvement plan. So just to recap, uh, the capital improvement plan was generated uh, following a pavement management project that we conducted roughly about three years ago where we reassessed all the roadways in town, implemented a new pavement management software, and then essentially built the capital improvement plan. So um, currently with the funding that we have available, we have been able to um, continue to achieve our goal, uh, which is keeping the good roads good well over time, um, repairing the bad roads or the roads that are in worse condition. So um, I included this map in the presentation to uh, show how we've been all over town uh, with our improvement program. Um, we've been completing uh, projects um, such as rehabilitations and also um, introducing preservation type treatments. Um, the streets that are in red, I mean, uh, that are in blue are streets that we've already uh, treated and then the ones in red are slated for this upcoming construction season. Um, next slide. So this slide here is just a recap of what we've already um, have completed with prices, miles treated. So in FY22, we completed a 2021 patch project um, that uh, treated kind of worse or isolated sections within a various amount of streets, uh, including Locust Ave, Coburn Road, Parham, Cumming, Althea, and Louie. Um, some of these streets, we performed this type of treatment in anticipation of the preservation treatments that happened the following year. Um, and then we also um, repaved Jocks Road, Bishop, Roberge, and then because of the funding allowed, we also forced in Danforth Road. So overall, um, that project year, we treated three point, about three and a half miles of roadway um, at a total cost of about one point, almost $1.2 million. Um, in FY23, we performed, this is the year that we introduced uh, preservation treatment. Um, we performed 3.7 miles of crack sealing along uh, various roadways and then we also uh, completed our preservation program within the Appaloosa neighborhood, Althea, Locust, and Farwell. Uh, this program overall treated uh, 8.6 miles of road at only um, just over a touch over a million dollars. And then FY24, which is still ongoing, um, we're gonna be completing Patriot Road this spring and because we got uh, pretty good uh, bid amounts, we also forced in forced in Deschanel Lane, which that road was reclaimed and repaved just before the winter. Uh, that program is expected to treat 1.6 miles um, of roadway at just about $850,000. Uh, next slide. And then uh, plan for this year, uh, we're gonna break it into two phases. Uh, phase one is gonna be a preservation phase. Uh, we're going to be um, introducing bonding wearing course. Uh, that treatment is gonna be um, completed over Lakeview Ave and Parham Road. This is within the limits of the Dragut Water District project. So that is to um, re repair the, uh, the trench that was put in um, within uh, that area. And then we'll be doing a rubberized trip, uh, chip seal similar to what was done on Farwell and Locust on Frost Road. Uh, the reason for that is the sewer department is still in the planning phases for their sewer um, expansion project. So that road is kind of on the line of needing more of a rehabilitation treatment. So if we can get there, at least with a rubberized trip, chi uh, chip seal, we can hold it together and then um, probably turn that into a cape seal. If the sewer department decides that they're gonna expand, we can overlay their, the entire roadway as well as their trench. Um, that's kind of the plan for that. That phase one is expected to um, treat about um, 2.1 miles of roadway at just over half a million. And then phase two is a rehabilitation portion of the project. Um, the streets slated for that program is Oregon Road and Nevada Road. Um, that's expected to treat about a one mile of roadway and cost um, about $675,000. It's still currently in the design phase. So overall, this program uh, will be at a total cost of 1.2 million treating a total amount of miles of just over three miles. Uh, if you wanna 
Next slide. So I just want to kind of highlight additional projects that um, outside of what we plan for the roadways uh, that we've done over the course of the past three years. Um, in FY22, um, we completed the Daisy Lane Drainage Improvement Project. So that one uh, was to help mitigate groundwater issues, which created um, severe icing along Daisy Lane. Uh, we used surplus capital um, as well as just a touch of some general funding to uh, complete that project. Um, also, in that year, we uh, received a grant for $135,000 to revitalize the Old Town Hall Park. That's the parcel of land next to Old Town Hall. Um, in FY 23, um, with the use of capital funding and some general funding, we slip lined a um, deteriorating culvert beneath Sherman Ave over by the tech school. Uh, that project, we uh, reached out to a lot of vendors um, and used some innovative um, slip lining product uh, called Channel Line, which is unique because you can customize it to the specific culvert and actually accommodate the deflections and issues within the culvert. So we slip lined that pro uh, culvert and it's been holding up very well. And then also within that year, we received some grant funding um, to extend the sidewalks along Coven Road. Uh, this has been a hot topic, um, at least since I've uh, been here and I've received numerous phone calls. So we were able to achieve that with the help of grant funding. So that extended sidewalks from Beach Street to Lakeview Ave, which allowed residents within those areas to safely walk to the town beach. In FY 2024, uh, with capital funding and general funding, um, we did drainage improvements along Madeline Terrace. Um, the um, scope of that, or the original scope of that project was to take a failed outfall offline and then redirect the water further down Madeline Terrace. With the rain events that occurred within the, the, um, within the project um, timeline, um, it actually revealed to us um, that additional neighborhoods over the years were tied into that drainage system and it kind of overwhelmed the overall system. So with the funding that has been available, we were able to upsize um, the drainage system in that neighborhood and mitigate um, any future flooding issues. Um, and then just a few months ago, we had some histor historic rainfall um, events that caused um, a culvert beneath the Chestnut, Chestnut Road to collapse and undermine the roadway, exposing natural gas infrastructure. Uh, we were able to allocate road stabilization funding to not only repair the road, but also do an emergency replacement of that culvert. Um, so those are just kind of additional projects that we complete, you know, aside from what we try to plan for the roads program. Um, so, and then the next slide. So this slide, I just wanna show what we've spent um, over the course or will spend over the course of the last three years in this upcoming year. So total, we've spent about $5.5 million on our infrastructure and roadway network. Um, as you can see from FY 2022 to FY 2024, we've consistently been able to um, allocate about just over $1.3 million of funding. Um, this funding is broken down between grants, general funding, chapter 90, capital, road stabilization. And then I do wanna highlight in FY 2025, I have estimated that we're gonna spend almost one and a half million dollars and that's including a new um, funding source called the Fair Share Act. Um, so if you go to the next slide. So to, to explain the Fair Share Act, um, this was passed by voters in 2022. It's a revenue raised by the 4% of surtax on taxable income over a million to be spent on public education and infrastructure. Um, Tingsboro was allocated $242,769. Uh, the way they allocate it or break it down for each municip municipality is they use the chapter 90 formula for the first um, 100 million. Well, the total is a 200, uh, I believe it's 200 million, or no, 100 million and then 50 million is allocated or broken up using the chapter 90 formula. And then there's another formula based upon the share municipality share of road mileage. Um, this funding is included in your chapter 90 allotment and is, is expected to be available for future years. Um, and then the next slide is if you have any questions. But uh, one thing just to make sure that people that are watching at home, when you see road stabilization, 
that's cannabis. That's our cannabis revenue, uh, the excise. That, that's the three quarters of that. Because people say, oh, what's road stabilization? Is that the big thing? No, that's the, that's the cannabis revenue that comes in and goes directly into road stabilization. And as you saw, it was like $2 million from $2 million. That, $2 million. So people say, hey, where's that money going? Well, guess what? That's where it's going. Um, so with that, I'll open up to questions. Uh, now I'll go back over this way. <laughs> Mr. Schneider. <laughs> All right. Um, Get on your toes. Thank you. That was a great presentation, thank by you. the way. Um, the Fair Share Act money, the 242000 First, my first thing it thought is that for a town as small as Kingsboro to get that much money, there are a heck of a lot of millionaires out there that are paying that 4% that surtax fine. Um, but my thought is that that 242000 albeit it's a big number, I'm sure that the schools are looking at that and salivating over it also. So this, this, we're going to have to figure out. No, this is purely for roads. So the Fair Share Act is, is a tax that distributes a certain percent to education and a certain percent to roads. This 242 is it's just of the road oh, perspective. Oh, even better. So the schools will get their shot at the fair share okay. <laughs> money. Stand, but they can't touch this 242. I stand corrected, and, and the 242, I'm sure, will be, will be used appropriately. Already spent. In, in yeah. Roads, yeah. <laughs> Um, can you go to the previous slide column, uh, slide six? So is that total amount, does that also include the culvert work and everything else yes. that, we, that we did? Yep. Okay. okay. <clears throat> I mean, really kind of where to start here. So when, when I first uh, started on this board uh, seven years ago, uh, the first project that I remember uh, that, that, that we did was Kendall Road. It was 0.73 miles, and it was $300,000. <laughs> and that was kind of what we were doing on a, uh, on a yearly basis. They did have one tax increase for like $1.2 million. We did, we did more, but that's really where we were at, right? And as many of the residents will tell me also, they know that a lot of developers didn't do what they were supposed to do 20, 30, 40 years ago. So this has been a compounding problem, and you know everybody wants to fix the roads. I understand that, but what we have done is we've put it in. We've put in a funding mechanism with the, the cannabis, is is one piece of it, right? Um, you know, capital is another. Uh, from the general fund, uh, we've prioritized roads uh, and tried to increase that every single year. To now we're at two hundred fifty or three hundred thousand dollars or something on, on a yearly basis. Then we're going for grants and capital. So really when you add it all up, we really quadrupled our, our road funding and it's been consistently now, it's for four years, we've quadrupled the road funding. We can't do it all at once. As I tell people, if you want to do it all at once, then it's gonna be a tax increase. You know, it's another, you probably have the real numbers, but 20 to $30 million, <coughs> right? So, you know, we're, and we, can't, we can't do that all in one year. But what we've done is put together a mechanism to be able to fund this on an on a annual basis and quadruple our road funding. Uh, and I just want to add, I just can't thank uh, Jake enough. Uh, when he does these things, what, what, I, I always got to remember what exactly it's called. Your uh, oh, rubberized chip seal yep. uh, <clears throat> and bonding. I mean, I think these are mechanisms that a lot of other towns and surrounding communities are gonna start using more and more. Uh, and having seen the results of those, I, I just can't commend you enough of, you know, yes, we've quadrupled the funds, but how exactly we spend it is also just as important. And I like what you have done, uh, you know, throughout this process to make sure that, you know, we're fixing the really bad roads, we're maintaining the good roads. Um, you know, you did that patch on these different roads, I mean, People look at that road, that's a terrible road. Now that you've done the patch, like, oh, that road's not bad. That road's pretty good. <laughs> you know, so you've really done an awful lot, and I just can't commend you enough. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Moran. Yeah, so <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so I'm just excited to learn this process, you know, more in depth, right, the funding mechanisms and such. And I think just to, for my own edification, and maybe for those listening, is there a particular um, process that roads are selected for, for instance, the crack sealing versus the rubberized versus yes. for rehabilitation? Um, 
So the way those are chosen, it's, you know, we use the pavement management shof software, but the roads have all been assessed, so that's from down to areas of cracking, um, deformation, um, elegant, you know, different types of longitudinal cracking, that type of stuff. Um, so the way I can, you know, plan out a crack ceiling program is I can just focus on roadways that have longitudinal cracking and, um, you know, elevated cracking, and then put that into the program that will spit out the roads that require that type of treatment, and then what's the estimated cost. Okay. And all that information gets updated as prices change um, and things like that. So, so, so if I just ask a question real quick, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but there, so there's already been an assessment done. Yep. And then you can go in and almost prioritize based mm -hmm. on what the town or, your, or the department wants to invest in for the year. Yep. Right. So you have that, which is great. I think it's great that the, the <coughs> assessment's been done, and hopefully it's an ongoing assessment because mm -hmm. of you know, yeah, wear and tear and erosion and such. And stuff. that the prioritization of those roads getting done, and hopefully at some point down the road in the future, that I don't know if we want to share the information with actual citizens or not, but basically the prioritization over the next 15 years is what we want to do, and that's the investment funding that we want to do. Go ahead, hey, Colin. Can you that Jake is very uh, smart. Yeah. Um, I would <laughs> for for the not so smart folks, what Jake has done with how we prioritize roads is for many years way prior to any of you serving on this board, we weren't taking care of roads. Mm -hmm. And so we found ourselves faced with a tremendously unaffordable backlog of roads that are in serious disrepair. So what Jake has done, and what we try to help residents understand is, the most cost effective way for us to repair roads is to maintain what we have that's in good condition, and when we can, address the more seriously disrepaired roads. And while that certainly doesn't help the person who's like, well, my road's terribly disrepaired, what it prevents is in five or six years a different board from being faced with the same challenge that you were all faced with with this plan. So it's a very intentional process. It's not based on preferences. It's based on, I mean, you see the cost. The mile of road is a million dollars. And what we've been able to do because of Jake's innovative techniques is say, well, we can prevent ourselves from being in this situation in five years if we spend $800,000 touching you know, five roads with these preservation methods. So it's a balancing act. We, when we can, like with Deschanel and Danforth, we've been able to force very seriously poor condition roads into the plan, all at the same time making sure that in five or six years we're not looking at all of our roads being in serious disrepair. Right, and I think that's what I was yeah. trying to get to, to the explanation for us of watching it. Jake uses really big words, so I'm, <laughs> I'm here to dumb it down for folks. <laughs> Well, appreciate the work and effort you've done, and I think it's fantastic that there's the assessment that's done, and there is a way to maintain, preserve, and also prioritize those roads that actually would need it. So, fantastic. Yes. Hi, Jake. Hi. Thank you for the, pr the uh, presentation, and look at how beautiful it is. It's not quite a pie chart, but it's just as <laughs> nice. It's, it's the next just best thing. Nice. <laughs> We're saving pie charts for January 29th, the budget meeting. Got it, got it. Um, so a few things. One, my understanding is that on the website somewhere, um, there is a list of the order of the roads that we're doing up to 2026, right? Mm -hmm. So if, is that correct, Jake? Yes. Okay. So if residents want to know is there road on the plan, they can go online and figure out, you know, is, is there road is the road on it? And second, do can we put this presentation on the website somewhere? Yeah, we'll supplement. We we usually have a button. It's been hidden because of the election, but there's a button on the home page that links to the road capital plan. We'll update it with this. Okay, so that if somebody wants to kind of see a full picture of what has happened previously and where we're going moving forward, right, they can kind of find it in one place, which I think will be really helpful. That's it for me. Thank you very much. Yeah, and, and for residents, if you go under under the departments under engineering, if you look down, there's a click here for the five-year road paving and maintenance plan. Um, Jake has done videos. Mm -hmm. he, he's done some things to explain. We know that the roads... It's a, it's something that people hold <laughs> near and dear. There's a lot of visceral reactions, um, and um, you know, I, I'm glad to see that. I like visuals like this. I like that the arrows go in the right way. Uh, <laughs> there's some things. I think there's just. Um, I just think it, it lays things out well to people to see. Hey, uh -huh. this is where the money's coming in, 
and this is where it's going out. Um, and I think we're going to need to do more of that, uh, laying it out easily for people. Um, some questions for you. So culverts. Mm -hmm. So yes, when you started, we've got the roads, we've got a plan, we've got all those things. Um, we've had problems, and, and we've been addressing them um, as they come up on the culverts. Do we have a plan for all the culverts? And, and so we can understand, because the challenge with culverts that's different than roads is if I fix a culvert, say, oh, at the elementary school, and I use a really big pipe, and then there's culverts downstream that aren't as big, I, I need to address that. So do we have a plan for all the culverts yet? And, and, or do we have a plan to get a plan? Mm -hmm. um, so <laughs> um, I believe it was last year or the year before we received the asset management grant, and that was more geared towards stormwater infrastructure to um, continue our uh, NIPTES MS4 permit efforts. But also within that, we did a assessment of the five kind of worst culverts in town. Um, with that, we were awarded a DER grant for 73 grand to start the data collection and preliminary design for Redgate, the culvert at Redgate Road, yep. and then the downstream culvert um, at on Dunstable by, I believe it's Kristen Way, it's near the pump station. Yep. Um, we are uh, next week or later this week, it might be Thursday, I have a uh, informal call with DER to look to try to get another grant for the culvert further down Dunstable Road towards um, uh, Flint's Corner. Um, and then also I've been working with consultants on getting quotes to perform. Um, it's because of the number of culverts and the cost, it's going to be kind of a, like a three-phase um, townwide culvert assessment. Uh, so with that, I hope to achieve, you know, prioritizing culverts throughout town and including this into our funding. And that's the challenge, right? Because roads, everybody sees the culverts they don't see until they fail. Mm -hmm. and I, I don't know if anybody knows, but uh, we got a lot of rain this year. So it really, exp mm -hmm. <laughs> it exposed a lot of stuff. So I know that, and, and the hard part is that we haven't been budgeting for that. We haven't been giving you what you need on that. And then when something happens, like, oh, Jake, find a way to fix that. And, and by, the, oh, by the way, come up with the money for it too. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's important for us to come up with a plan for our culverts, because we do have a lot. The, the other thing is, so you've been doing this program for a while. There's some new things that have come up, um, and we do assess the roads. Do we go back? So let's say we did something that was new two, three years ago. Do, are we going back to then assess and grade those roads and make sure that, okay, it worked the way we expected? Are there things that we need to tweak? Sometimes we have different, not all vendors, not all mm -hmm. contractors are going to be as good as others. Do we go back and look at those? Um, yeah, so my ultimate plan with the pavement management program, and because I came in here uh, four years ago, I kind of wanted to start from scratch. So as I complete the roadways, um, I track it, I track the treatment types, um, and then every, I I'm hoping to go every five years to reassess the roadways to see how that um, capital improvement plan um, worked and then grade it, and then over time, you know, say in the course of 10 years, create our own town's degradation curve. So right now we're going off of, and by degradation curve, just to see how the roads degrade over time. Um, and then that way we can more accurately track how the roads are uh, performing, and then how also they're degrading by, you know, road type or road classification. So that's my ultimate goal for this program. So if I hear you correctly, to boil it down, to not use big words. Um, so we have a mod, we, we use software that models what the roads and, and what the degradation is gonna be and here's how we should tackle it. But then there's the actual, right? You, mm -hmm. And you're looking at that over time to see what the actuals are so you can adjust your models to, yep. to better deal with what happens here in Tingsburg. Yes. Um, no, this is great. I think this is important, I know this, this is work for you to pull this stuff together, but I think that the value to the residents is huge because, I mean, we all know what, there's certain things that people talk about, right? Their taxes, <laughs> their taxes and uh, the roads, you know, public safety, there, there's, there's only certain things. This really hopefully helps them kind of see where those types of things are and, and having the, the plan 
um, so that they can, they know what's going on. They, they know potholes. Mm -hmm. So thank you for coming in. Yep, um, thank you. We don't have, we don't need to approve anything for this, right? Uh, Just yeah. say yeah. thank you. Yeah. And <laughs> Great job. Keep up the good yes. work. That's all right. right. Thank you. All right. Have a Excellent. Good night. Thanks. Thank you. You're right, though. You know, that's the one visible thing that people see of their tax dollars at work. And I think we love seeing paving going on somewhere. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, <laughs> tax dollars. I, something's have happening. Have a good night. Exactly. And I think when we can show people that we're spending, uh, you saw all the different varieties of funding sources. We're not just saying, oh, the state's not increasing our funding. We're not doing anything. We've been very creative. We may not have hit your street yet, but we're hitting streets all over town and making progress. Yeah, I will add, relative to the uh, Fair Share Act and the 242000 um, that might be guilt money, too, because the reality is that, you know, the money that we've been getting from the roads has been frozen at the same amount for 13 years. And towns like us have been screaming that, gee, you know, you're getting all this money, but it's not coming in the infrastructure and the roads right. is what people see the most and where we have some of the biggest problems. Um, so we're getting a little bit more of it, but the reality is even if you take the, the 420 plus the 240, that's $660,000 for, for one year. Um, we need to spend, if, if you look at going by Jake's presentation from probably a year and a half ago, we need to spend like 1.7 million just to kind of break even now with the with the new costs on everything. So, yeah, I, I'm glad to have the 240, and I, I'm not going to give it back. But right. it's still not enough, right? right? We're, we're still we're still just trying to to catch up on some things, and and you know, with costs the way they are, we're not. 